All right, so following the uh, GIS uh, amending, I found two things. One, that including age, race, and household data uh, becomes a very, very large file, a file that's so large that Meerkat can't parse it. Uh, so what I've done here is just worked with a, a file that has uh, race data and household data. Um, and just like we had done in the week prior, I came in and created a new Meerkat file um, and then use that Meerkat file to parse out um, just as we had previously done. So let me let me go ahead and first just kind of unpreview all of this stuff and show you what I what I did. Uh, first I took the area of the bounds in point space and made a new XYZ point. Now the values here are 0, 0, 0 so that I can create a vector that goes from the center of all the data to 0. I can then move all of my geometry along that vector so that you can see I have uh, the portion of West Philadelphia I'm sampling. Uh, I then make a polyline. I'll turn off this one. The polyline shows me the census blocks and I actually use the command boundary to use a boundary surface here to make uh, actually filled in the, these surfaces. The next thing I did is uh, looked at the field names. So now using the new GIS file, the new shape file I made, I have all of the initial information and I follow that up with uh, some fields that I actually went back in and renamed. So we have total population. Uh, I had to abbreviate some of these. Uh, we can't have very long names apparently in the, the shapefile. So it's the total population. Uh, it, under the census data it's called white alone, black or African American, American Indian or native, uh, Asian alone, Pacific Islander, other race or two or more races. The data you see down here is household data that we'll have to look up in the uh, the chart that came, or sorry, the, the the text file that came with the household data. So you doing this, I take these fields and I actually connect them to a list item. So if I type list item, I can take the field values, is my list, and I can sort them out on uh, an index. And my indexes are here. So if I was looking for just data on uh, Asian uh, uh, Asian alone, the census data for Asian alone is 22, so I would put in number 22 and out the other side would come just uh, the, the, the population on those numbers. So what I've done is set up down here the total population um, and then those different subcategories um, and I then double check this by adding them all up. So I use the addition component here and I plugged in each of my uh, uh, subsequent groups. Uh, you, if you zoom in farther you can add more things to these nodes um, and do, do a double check. I check that you know my third one in is 101 and under my total population the third one in is also 101 so I'm, I'm happy to see that. Now what I can do is say alright well I'm interested in seeing where um, you know, predominantly uh, Indian communities are, predominantly Asian communities are, predominantly white communities are. Um, and to do that, what I'm going to say is I'm going to look for higher percentages over others. So if I say, let's, for instance, I was looking for um, black communities, I would take black and divide it by the total population using division here in this division command. Um, you can see it gives me an error. That's because there are some locations up here that have uh, no population whatsoever. Definitely along the rail lines. There's even some commercial properties that don't have residential. So when we divide by zero, we get a null value. Out this side, you can see that um, I'll never have a value bigger than one, but there are some locations where within the census block, uh, we only have 4% African American. Um, other locations where we have 100%. So what I need to do now is to map these values to a color so that we can paint this chart a different color. To do that, I take my division and I'm going to take the bounds. What the bounds are are the min and max values within that system. So I said bounds and I right click to say flatten. All of the data that comes in here, I don't care about its hierarchy. I just want to know the actual numbers. The next thing I do is deconstruct a domain not a domain squared but just a domain and that gives me the start and end of the bounds so what that means that's the the smallest value and the largest value so here we should really have zero and then one um, I plug that into a gradient 
and I have my start value at the 0 and my end value at 1. Um, and then along this, I want to plot these different percentages. So I plug my t value is my division. And then finally, I come up and I have to get a custom preview. Uh, preview, there we go, custom preview. Um, and I say I'm, I want to preview my boundary surfaces under this color scheme. So if I unhide this um, and don't click anything, you can see the red uh, blocks are where there is no uh, population data and where we see a light bright green that is the highest percentage of uh, African American population and the dark green uh, is a, a higher percentage of, of or sorry, a lower percentage of African American population. It doesn't tell me that who lives there, it just says that it's uh, predominantly not um, African American. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Another way that I'm going to work out now is to see if I can actually uh, abstract this a little bit and make uh, a piece of representative geometry that might be able to be colored with uh, different portions uh, to reflect uh, the different populations living in a given block. Um, but that's it for this video for now. Um, it's looking at how we've been able to amend the GIS data into the shapefile, using that shapefile to get race data into the city. Uh, I could further break this down into household data, which would have to do with, uh, as we see here in this chart, um, husband and wife family, other family, male householder, female householder, non-family household, non-family uh, household living alone or not living alone. I think for me there's a little bit of overlap in categories there, but I'm sure the census knows what they're doing. Um, so that will be something we look at in the future.